Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So I've gotten a few questions and I've also seen in my Facebook groups that I follow <laughs> um, that people are buying these welcome sign SVG files and it comes as one image, right? Um, and you can't cut it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, I downloaded this one from Creative Fabrica because as you know, I'm an affiliate with uh, Creative Fabrica so I get a lot of stuff from there. Um, but I would assume that this would be very similar to buying an SVG file on Etsy, uh, font bundles, Creative Fabrica, whatever. So this is the one that I downloaded. Um, so let's go into Design Space. So I went and I clicked Upload, but hold on. This is where you would be if you were starting a new project, right? So let's go to Upload. I have already um, unzipped the file and moved the one that I want into um, into my desktop. So what you want to do is you want to go to Upload Image, Browse, and you want to go find your image. So I did drop it into my um, desktop onto my desktop and here's the welcome sign. So I'm just gonna double click on it. I don't even know which one it was. That's the thing that I don't like about buying a lot of files is that when it comes with too many things, then you have to open each one to see which one that you want. Then you gotta upload it. So I hate, I just picked a random third one. So here we go, here's the welcome sign. Let's click save. So I did some research. I have not done one of these signs, but um, I'm not showing you how to do the sign. I'm showing you how to get it so that you can cut it on your Cricut. Um, now, what's going on here? It's not letting me save for some reason. Okay, there it is. Um, so what I did was I went on Etsy. I looked up welcome signs to see what the average size that people are doing. So it looks like it's about four to five feet, depending on the board that you get, and then about 10 inches wide. So this is perfect because um, once I show you, I mean, I can show you as big as 11 and a half inches because you don't want to slice up your stencil, right? You don't want a seam down your stencil. Um, I, it just makes it more difficult. It, it's definitely doable, but um, I, and I don't think you want a board that big. So um, about, 10 inches and then my height five feet five three is about the average sign of your um your, for your welcome sign for your porch so it is really really slow i don't know what's going on okay here we go so oh of course this one okay this one you can see over here each letter is its own image and you can tell because you can, you have the option of ungrouping so i'm going to ungroup it when it's like this, it's very easy, right? You can select all and you're gonna go to the width and let's change this to 10 inches and see what it gets us. So at 10 inches, it's 54 inches, which is what, five feet? No, less than five feet, because five feet would be 60 inches. So four, four and a half, because 48 inches is four feet. <laughs> Sorry. I'm kind of slow this morning. <laughs> so. In this case, here you have it. Each letter is separate, right? And each letter you can cut um, as a stencil using your vinyl and you would be set. The only thing that I would add is maybe a registration mark. So let me show you how you would do that. So let's zoom out so we can see what this looks like. All right, so it doesn't even fit all on one thing, okay? So here's our welcome sign. Um, this is what I would do. So let's do our little star, okay? We're gonna do a star on the side and let's see, each letter, let me, gosh, it's really slow today. The reason why you want your registration mark is that you wanna make sure that it lines up straight. You don't want your E to be a little bit over and then your L a little bit over because all of that is kind of, um, you're looking at it and you're just doing like a visual thing or you get your ruler out, but there's still errors that can be made, right? So what you can do is, let's look at how big each letter is. So, oh, why can't I zoom? Okay, um, so the W is 10 inches across, seven inches down. Okay, so that looks good. So what I would do with the registration mark is I would make a little star And I would put it right here. 
let's, yeah, let's do it right here. So what I would do then is let's duplicate these stars and kind of put it in between the two letters, okay? Um, for each one. And this way you don't have to worry about um, lining it up because your stars are gonna line up by themselves and then your letters will be straight. So, all right, I just wanna make sure how big that one is. So let's do this last star. Okay, so I'm putting it all here. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna duplicate all these stars. So I'm hitting the shift key and grabbing all the stars. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm gonna change the color just to make it easier on us. Okay, so here we go. And then I'm going to line this up so that my stars are right on top of each other, okay? All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a W. Hold on, let's grab this pink star first. So here's our pink star and our W, and we're gonna attach it. So when this cuts, uh, what happened here? Okay. So when this cuts, it's gonna cut the W and the star, okay? Then we're gonna do the E. And the E is gonna have two stars because, and I'll show you what I need in a second. Hold on, let's grab this star first. This star, then this star, and then the E. Okay, and we're going to attach it. Because what's gonna happen is when you go to line this up, so let's say this is your individual stencil, right? When you put it on your board, you're gonna put your W first. So line up your W. And the nice thing about the W is it has these lines across. So you could just put your ruler down and then put it across your board. You line up your W, you're good. Your first W is there. When you go get, when you line up your E, you're gonna have these two stars, okay? So you're gonna line up the E by matching up this star to that star. Then when you do your L, you're gonna have the bottom star, the top star, um, and then your L, okay? And you're going to attach. So then you have your E in place, your E has this bottom star, you're gonna line up the bottom star um, with your L. So now that if you line up everything, then you know welcome is gonna be perfectly straight, okay? So let's do the next few letters just to get in the groove of things, okay? So I'm gonna, and remember, you needed to duplicate your stars because each letter has a top star and a bottom star, except for, of course, the first one and then the last one, because the last one, you only need this E, right? You don't need anything below. So let's grab this um, bottom star, hit the shift key, the top star, and then your letter, and then you're going to attach. So when you bring this over, you have that star, you have your stencil, right? You're gonna line up this star with the bottom star of the L, and then your C now matches everything from above. So bottom star, top star, and then your O, and then you're gonna attach and line it up. Now, <laughs> obviously you don't need to line it up in design space because it was already lined up. I'm kind of just um, showing you what you would do once you get it out. So, all right, last one is your E, or the bottom star, top star. Oh, it's really slow today. And your M, and then you're going to attach. So you're gonna put that over here when you line it up. Um, and I do this, I do these registration marks for any time that I have a really complicated layering project that's just vinyl. Um, you, 
I guess you could do it with HTV as well, so iron-on vinyl. The only thing is you would use it to line it up and then you gotta cut it off because you don't, you obviously don't want to um, iron down your registration mark, right? Um, so that's the only thing. All right, so let's grab these two things and attach. Okay, and then you would line it up like this. So let's go to the Make It screen so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so each letter is its own, like basically 12 by 12, right? Um, it, it, you are kind of wasting some vinyl because you could have cut off this part and reused this and this if you didn't have the stars. But to have, um, to basically make it foolproof and make sure that your, um, your project is perfectly straight, which I mean, you know it's gonna be on someone's, whether it's your porch, a gift, or definitely if you're selling it, you, you wanna make sure it's straight. It's gonna drive you insane. And then you don't wanna deal with a um, cranky customer who leaves bad reviews or keeps emailing you, whatever. So this will definitely, you waste a little bit of vinyl, but honestly, it's worth it because your project is gonna come out perfectly aligned. So each letter is gonna have two stars, except for the first letter, because the first letter, you only have that bottom star to match up, right? And then the last letter, you don't, you only have the top star. So here are all your letters and you're gonna just wanna cut it out and it will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel out of here. I'm gonna show you, so I have this. I'm gonna now upload the same image again, okay? Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that most files that you get on Etsy would not let you ungroup it. So I'm going to weld it to make it look like what you would probably normally get. So what you would get is you would get a welcome sign that is all one piece, right? So you can't um, ungroup it. It's it's one image, it's, um, it's one line item as opposed to each letter being its own line item. Okay, so let's make this the same length as this one, which, hold on, I don't remember how big we made it. Oops. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, all right, let me just change it to 10 inches again. So my width, I'm gonna change it to 10 inches and it made it, yeah, 54 inches um, down. Okay, so I am going to get rid of this just so that we only have one welcome sign on here at one time. Okay, so here's our welcome sign. It's all attached as one item. It's giving you an, a warning, right? Saying it's too big. And we know it's too big, it's 54 inches long. You can't do this. So what you would wanna do is you're going to slice out each one of these letters. So um, bring in a square. And I'm just gonna make the square super big. Okay, so we're gonna slice it out one at a time, okay? So assuming that you like the size of this. So this is 10 inches wide and um, four and a half feet tall. So we're gonna slice this out so that each individual letter is separate, separate from the whole thing. So you want to, when you're slicing, you want to um, bring in another shape. You, you can only slice two things at one time. So in this case, we're slicing out the welcome sign. That's one item, right? And you know because it's one single line item over here and then the square. And so we are isolating the E first. So the E is gonna be completely covered by the square and nothing else. So then you're gonna grab the two items and you're gonna click on slice. And so you can get rid of your slice results. So that you're gonna move out. So here's your E. Now your E is separate from the whole sign. So we're basically making each letter its own item. I mean, because I'm, I feel very strongly that um, your Etsy file would come as one line item as opposed to Creative Fabrica where each letter was already separated. Okay, so you wanna grab, you wanna get rid of the slice results and then now your M is separated. Now I'm moving it over, but you probably wouldn't want to do that because 
You want to again now add your registration marks so that each letter is lined up to the one above, right? So um, I wonder how they did line this up. Give me a second. So once you've separated out each one, and I bet they probably did center align. So let's grab everything and go to align and do center. Yeah, that looks about right. So once you've lined everything up, then you want to then you want to go add your registra registration mark. All right. So that's the end of the welcome sign. Um, I would say that this would apply to any big SVG file like that you would get like. Um, I don't know, home sweet home. Sometimes when you buy that, that's all one item, right? And so you feel like you can only make something as big as 12 by 12, but technically, as long you could separate it so that home is one word, sweet is another word, and home is another word, which would then allow you to go 12 inches for each item and make it really, really big. And um, I've also gotten questions on how to make someone's name, like for their bedroom, really, really big. Um, so what I would do on that one is, so let's get rid of this now that we know how to do this. Um, and I'm going to do, let's do a cursive sign, okay? And I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do Charlotte. Oops, <laughs> I'm typing in her name. Um, I'm gonna pick one of my favorite fonts, Hanaberry Koo. I get so many questions on this font, so I'm just gonna click on it. Um, it's from Creative Fabrica. I love it because it's that whole whimsical, um, you know, with lots of little swirls and whatever, but it's, um, while it looks delicate, it actually cuts and weeds really easily. And it's so, it's um, it's just low maintenance. You know, you can, you can cut it and um, vinyl, cardstock, um, iron on, and it, and it works pretty well. Okay, because you see like even these little swirls, they're not super thin. So look at that and then the T's, that they're all um, nice and thick, even though it doesn't look like it. It still gives you that whole whimsical feel. Okay, so let's talk about another thing. Um, I talk about this all the time, anytime that it comes up. So these letters, they're separate, right? Um, and we want them connecting because that's how handwriting works. So a lot of people like to decrease the letter space. So you can start decreasing and you can see they're moving closer together, right? The only problem is look at the space between the H and the A. It's pretty minimal, we're almost there, right? But look at the space between the T and the E and the O and the T. At some point, H and A are gonna connect and yet O and T will not be connected or T and E. So for me, I like to use a different program to do all my fonts, like all my uh, names or words, whatever. Um, especially if I'm doing a lot, like if I do something five people or 10 bags where I need to do names, there's no way I'm doing it this way. I'm gonna do it either in Inkscape, Font Lab Pad, um, or if, even Silhouette, their, um, their software, because it all connects automatically for you. But if you're just doing one letter, like in this case I am, let's ungroup it. This is how I would do it. I would move each letter over the way I want to. So I'm gonna do it like that. And I want like a slight bounce to it so it's not totally even. Some letters are up, some letters are a little bit down and I'm trying to connect everything. And I think because I'm connecting everything really close, we're gonna run into that other design space issue where some of these, some of these holes will um, close itself. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. Now here's the other thing. I bet this font, when you do Charlotte in any other program, the, the two T's, the little lines like this, it would be one big line. Because look, if I put this right next to each other, that looks ridiculous, right? That little thing in the middle, it's too thick. And if I move it over, it's super thick. Like, it just doesn't look right. I mean, I guess I can kind of mess with it. That looks the best, I think, out of out of everything, but still this part is way too thick for this font. Um, if you use any other program, it would connect 
perfectly for you. Okay, so here's Charlotte. And I'm going to grab all of this and weld it. Oh, and nothing closed up. Interesting. Sometimes, like, this little loop in the R will close up. So what you would do is you would undo. And you just make this super big. Right now it's 25 inches. Oh, maybe because it's already 25 inches. I bet. Let me see if I make it really small. Let's zoom into this thing. Because I felt like it was a for sure thing it was going to do that. So here it is at 100%. Let's say you do something, this is a pretty normal size, six inches. So let's weld this and see if anything closes up. So the H closed up right here, right? So you would undo it. And the workaround is make this really big. When you space it out really, really big, for whatever reason it works, you're gonna weld it. And then once it's welded and it's all nice, then you click on it and then you resize it back to the seven inches or whatever. And then you can move on with your life. Okay, so what I would do with this is if you wanted to make a name really long, um, but you don't have 12 by 24 cardstock, that would be one way to do it, is I would make this, um, the width is going to be 23 and a half because that's as big as you can go. It won't go all the way to 24 inches, right? So I would do it 23 and a half. Oops, that's 23.51. It won't. Okay, so let's zoom out. I would make, I would cut it with 12 by 24 cardstock. That would be option number one. Option number two is if you don't want to spend your money on 12 by 24 cardstock, then I would do my bottom layer as cardstock and I would slice this in half, okay? So um, first I would duplicate this because my top layer is gonna be vinyl. You can either use adhesive vinyl or glitter vinyl. I mean, I'm sorry, or HTV. So you can either iron it on or you can apply the sticky adhesive onto the cardstock. So what I would do is the top layer would be your vinyl, your bottom layer, would be, um, let's slice this in half. So I would make my square. Um, oh, wait a minute. I, so 11 and a half plus 11 and a half is only 23. So you would actually have to slice this up into three pieces. I would just make my square 11 inches and Duplicate it and maybe put it over here. Uh, let's see, where would I want to put this? Maybe slice it right here because it'll be easy for you to attach it and line it up here. Let's see where we would want this. Maybe slice it up right here. Okay, so we're going to slice Charlotte up into three pieces. So here's our first piece with our first square. Okay, and then slice up this one. What you want to make sure is where you're slicing like this. I wanted, I didn't want this. I didn't want this T, the little extra part right here, to be its own separate piece. Because then you got to tape it together here. So you want to make sure that even though we're slicing it, we're slicing it in big pieces. I want this to be in three separate pieces, not four or five, right? Um, okay, so let's grab these two and slice. Okay, so now this piece is 7.6 by 6.6. You can cut that on your Cricut with 12 by 12 cardstock, 7.2 by 6.6, good. And then our last piece is eight and a half by 7.2. So this is gonna be paper. So I would probably use 110 pound cardstock just to make it easy on yourself. Um, if I were to do this this way, what I would do is I would use the 110 pound cardstock so that it's not flimsy. Then this top layer, I would probably, if it's, if you like glitter, I would use Glitter HTV because you can buy Glitter HTV in a roll. I always buy it in bulk. That's the cheapest that you can get either on 651 Vinyl or even Cricut.com. 
and I have links for both of them so please use it I really appreciate it um, but I all my vinyl um, are on rolls so if it's on a roll and you're using your Cricut you can cut up to 20 23 and a half inches right so this would all be one piece you would lay it on top of your cardstock and then it would look like it's all one piece if you were to use vinyl adhesive um, I would probably still go with a darker color because it will hide any mistakes more easily right so um, but I also again still like glitter HT uh, glitter vinyl but my favorite is glitter HTV that thing will hide all your mistakes and it, and it glitters way more like it shines and shimmers way more than its counterpart of the adhesive glitter vinyl so anyway that's how I would do this project. I hope that helps. You don't have, you can, you know, separate this, but this is one name where it's supposed to be one, one thing. But if it was, like I said, the home sweet home, I would break up each word into one thing. So the whole word home could be 12 inches and sweet could be 12 inches and then home 12 inches again. So instead of having a 12 by 12 sign, you could have something really massive, right? It could be, let's see if you make it 12, I don't know, instead of 12 by 12, it might end up being really, really big. I actually don't know because it depends on the width. <laughs> so, all right, um, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know, give me your feedback, and then if it still didn't help you, let me know where you got stuck or what it is that this none of these solutions worked for you, and then we'll come up with something else. But I think this will solve most of your problems. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.